Technobrain, Africa's second fastest growing technology company. Africa came first, we came in second. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unstoppable. My guest this week is Rakesh Rao, the CEO of Crown Paints Kenya Limited, a man who has had some phenomenal achievements in the 10 years that he has been at the helm of this company. My name is Pete Ondeng, and this is Unstoppable. Hi, Rakesh. Welcome to Crown Paints. Thank you very much. I appreciate your visit here. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us. Now, Crown Paints has been around for quite some time. Yes. Um, when did it start? I think Crown uh, Paints has been completed in more than 50 years. 50 com years. company has been established in 1958. Okay. And it's gone through various ownerships from the British to, to Indian origin. Okay. Your, your core business is, yes. is paints. Yeah, we manufacture paints. Uh, we manufacture raisins. We, we manufacture various types of automotive paints. We manufacture road marking paints. Uh, we manufacture various architecture coatings and various plasters. Mm -hmm. uh, we manufacture various adhesive. And your market is, is here in Kenya and in the East oh, Africa We region? are in East Africa. Crown right, paints, East Africa. Uh, we hold a major market share here, more than 65% market share. 65%? Yeah, in particular on premium sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, our market share more than 45% mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya. Uh, we also have a establishments in uh, in uh, Uganda. We've been marketing our product as a regal paint there. We have full manufacturing facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have manufacturing uh, facilities in Tanzania and Arusha. We just started recently. And we're likely to expand further in uh, Dar es Salaam and Mwanza. Mm -hmm. And we started the last two years. So we have like more than 14 uh, distribution centers across East Africa. Tell me a little bit about the competitive forces here. Probably we have dominated the markets in last um, uh, almost 10 years, particularly in, uh, in premium quality segments where you need the cream of the customers, they prefer to buy crown paints. Rakesh, uh, if I'm not wrong, when you took over the company in 2005, your sales revenues were about 1.2 billion shillings. Yeah, yeah. What are they now? I think we likely to close this year six billion shillings. Six billion shillings. Yes, in 2014. And so what do you attribute? Times. What do you attribute this uh, growth to? I think, uh, of course, uh, if you talk about construction booms in Kenya, mm. a professional management, a very aggressive approach, a strong uh, strategies to improve the sales, and uh, of course, uh, mm. uh, a motivated staff. That's one of the uh, main thing which we found that uh, we have a great. Uh, 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 manpower strength in the organizations we make quality products and we ultimately thanks goes to our customers who have been really contributed mm. at a great extent to distribute our products uh, with uh, full support. Tell me what drives you you're, you're as the team leader? Oh I'm a very self-motivated man uh, I when get up in the morning from up to till uh, I just drive myself I come with my daily targets I don't I believe in completing my daily task and daily targets mm. And I believe that uh, way I've been born and brought up by my parents that uh, when you work for someone, you give your 100%. And mm -hmm. I, I try to give 200% uh, to the organizations because ultimately uh, I can't sleep well if I not achieve something in a day. You grew up in, uh, in India? I grew up in India, yes. And your background is what? Can you give us... Uh, okay, I'm a commerce graduate. Commerce. And then I done my uh, cost management accountancies. Mm -hmm. I'm a cost accountant. Mm -hmm. I work, I started my career with finance. Mm -hmm. and then I moved to sales. Okay. And then I worked for IT for a few years mm -hmm. and then uh, most of the time I spend time in sales. So you're, you sound like a very positive, very sort of self-driven uh, person. Yeah, yeah. What's your business philosophy? I think I, I business um, philosophy is just to, to grow. I mean, it should not stop. Because uh, when you're working for the, any organizations, uh, you've been taking care of more than, uh, I, I, t I took care of more than 500, 700 people and I have a responsibility to take care of 500, 700 families mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that uh, I inspire them he came with a vision and with a strategy of making the company grow to a uh, to be one of the best leading companies in East and Central Africa. 
Actuality was during Mr. Rao's time when we have expanded Crown even beyond Nairobi. We only used to sell Crown in Nairobi and part of Mount Kenya and Nakuru only and part of Kisumo town and Mombasa depot. But now it is known all over the country because of his initiative of reaching the small and the big companies. He has not only reached the small companies but it's even other countries. I'm wondering if you can think of uh, one or two very difficult moments yeah. in this job yeah. that you felt either your back was against the wall or no. maybe you were pushed to your knees or something like that. Yeah, I think one of the most difficult situations uh, when the global meltdown happened in 2008 where most of the cash right. crunches started uh -huh. and most of the banks were uh, very difficult to give any limits or any cash uh, to you. Which is affecting a lot of affecting companies. Affecting entire, all organizations and right. um, that time uh, most of the, our commercial uh, papers uh, holders who, who give us the money because right. we are listed company, we raise our funds through right. commercial papers. Mm -hmm. They all they would, uh, would like to have money back because the market was unstable and uh, unsecured. So everybody was demanding. They were demanding the money, and then let's say four million dollars is just been uh, within a you to pay in two months. So how did you how did you deal with this? Yeah, I think that time I think we keep kept quiet uh, and calm and uh, approach some other good banks and uh, talk to them because this is the situation. And uh, mm -hmm. I think our fundamentals of our, our company was very strong. If you last five years growth plan we given to them. Mm -hmm. And we were able to convince the bank, and bank also understood that uh, which company we are talking about, and they 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 trusted in our leadership, and right. they came and uh, stand, stood behind us, and they supported us. But there was a really difficult time where you don't know what to do in, tomorrow because if all money, you know, they withdraw the money, how you go, how are you going to pay the suppliers, right. how are you going to run the business, and, it and was your a, options a, were narrowing, and uh, you had, I'm sure, a lot of. Uh yeah, it was difficult because supplier also at that time become very tough that they don't want to give any extended credits, they want their payment fast. Everybody's demanding money. Everyone demanding money and right. their money is not here. In 2008, uh, it was already two years uh, old in office. Yeah, but uh, that is a crisis which was uh, globally. But what he did, uh, he came up with a scheme side that we were able to give extra discounts to customers. So we are we are we are being fully financed from the uh, from by the customers, yeah. So that helped us to be stable in one way or the other. Yes. And then uh, he also brought in uh, uh, promotional schemes, which we were able to break even uh, at, uh, at 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 a tender uh, value. Isn't this the, the thing that brings so many businesses down? The mismanagement of that moment that... Uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes yeah. that is a very critical situation and, and we, if you do not manage your cash, it's a business is a cash management. Absolutely. If you have a poor cash management, you always fail. Right. And that many organizations fail and that, that time when many co corporate companies and worldwide has been closed down. <laughs> yeah. Now, yours is a very profitable business. Yeah. And obviously you're growing. Yeah. Um, can you say something about the internal management of this company yeah. and how that is contributing to this growth? I think internal management basically have a strong leadership, have a strong processes. Mm. Okay, we work on best practices of Kaizen. Kaizen. And Kaizen. Mm. And Kaizen is, is, is where we try to control our, on our rest and improve the productivity. Mm. So if you say like uh, we have grown six times in last 10 years, ten years right. but we have never major in, done any investment in any plant and machineries. Mm. So you this have is not made any major, major investment. investment. So it is just improving the productivity, inspiring people, training people, improving the processes, mm -hmm. put proper IT systems, mm -hmm. proper controls and manage and monitor. So most important thing which we've been trying to do is to improve our monitoring systems on the processes. On the processes. Okay, whatever we do, we are able to monitor it, mm -hmm. we are able to control it, and we are able to evaluate it. There's a lot you're also doing on the CSR side. Yeah. Uh, corporate social responsibility. Something you're doing with the painters. Can you say something about that? I think uh, we are the first company who took a charge to train uh, more than eight, seven thousand painters in Kenya. Seven thousand painters. painters. Yeah, because it's, it's a it's a type of corporate social responsibility. We take on a big project because these are the people I've been using paints, and the other people who recommend the paints. And we were we were finding in the market that um, the skills of the painters is not up to the mark because if we do not 
improve their skills, right. they will not be able to use the, our high-end products, products right, because we right. we have been being innovative. We have been yes. bringing many many products every year, yeah. and the application is always a challenge in paint industry. So mm -hmm. that's the reason that uh, we would like to connect to the, all the painters who would like to paint uh, the houses. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we can able to impart the knowledge. We can able to train them, and this is the first time we took a call where. We spend more, more than half a million dollars to train painters across the Kenya. Half a million dollars? Yeah. So this is a program, you train them here or you train them no, at No, we, it depends. We, uh, we, we, we have a trainer uh, at all locations. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do, we have a retired teachers we hire from the schools who are just retired, mm -hmm. who have a little bit of uh, science knowledge. Uh, we, we bring them to the factory. We train, we train them about the paints process mm. and the applications mm -hmm. and up, they are readily available at all branches mm. to wow. go and visit all the customers yeah. to train their painters and to upgrade their skills. Rakesh, let's, let's look forward. Yeah. You've made these achievements. Uh, where do you see this company going? Where do you see Rakesh going in the coming years? Of course, I am uh, in... Uh, uh, both CEO, there's uh, no more uh, uh, further to do. <laughs> there's no uh, more growth for you? Of course, I would like to uh, take this company from here mm -hmm. to double my turnover in in next five to seven years. Right. And, and would like to place organizations uh, in Crown Paints in a regional ma ma market with a very strong footing because the way the Crown has been strong, have a strong footing in Kenya mm -hmm. and this market has been using a high-end quality brands mm -hmm. which is not there in East Africa. So I, I have my, my, my responsibility is to educate East African painters and the customers mm -hmm. to improve the quality products and, and thus uh, enhance, uh, enhance the, 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 the quality of lifestyle because right. the paints is uh, not just a, a decorative finish, it's become a lifestyle. Rakesh Rao. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Pleasure talking to you. Thank and you. And what more can I say? Focus, determination, and an unwavering spirit that we call unstoppable. We're going to be back next week with another unstoppable man or woman. My name is Peter Ndang. Goodbye.